One of the men featured in that special package, aspiring to lead Lagos, Gladibor Rose Vivor, the Labour Party governorship for Lagos State, joins us now in the studio. Good morning, GRV. Good morning. I mean, morning. That's, it's okay to say GRV, right? It's okay. Either <laughs> way, Governor Rose Vivor, okay. GRV. Oh, oh, Governor, Governor, Governor Rose Vivor. We <laughs> like that too. Good morning. A few more days. Let's yes, wait. Yes, yes, yes. All right, good morning. Good to have you again. It's always you know, a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. Uh, two things to kickstart this interview with. Mm -hmm. uh, one is to assess the, the import of the extension yes. by... INEC, mm -hmm. uh, is that to your advantage or does it mean that you will need to spend more money and more resources and more energy in reaching across? And then secondly, I see that you, you know, you are seizing the momentum. You were in Nekwe mm -hmm. uh, yesterday mm -hmm. and a few other places. But then the report was that uh, there was an attack mm -hmm. and indeed uh, some elements shot at mm -hmm. some of your guys. Mm -hmm. Were you the target? Is this about what... Uh, but the judge was talking about that you I mean, might be... Yes, there have been a lot of threats. There have been a lot of... Um, we've gotten a lot of intel about potential assassination attempts on my life. Um, yesterday in Itapo in uh, Ekbe, Ekbe. Um, we had Honorable Wali Oluo with us. We also had Honorable Najim uh, from the PDP working with us. <coughs> and they were also shot at, right, uh, in Ekbe yesterday. And there was a lot of anger amongst the APC youth that were there. Because they were, I mean, these people were wearing um, Greater Rising t-shirts, so we are not speculating. They were APC. And um, the idea is we need to move away from this bureaucracy that legal state has come to be defined as, where it's about um, violence and vitriol and anger and suppression and intimidation. If you do your job, you should not have to intimidate people in relation to how they want to vote, mm. right? So, um, but for us, 95% of the journey was a beautiful one. Mm. Um, people came out in droves, they were happy to see us, there was joy on their faces, there was hope on their faces, and that's what we're doing, you know? Um, in relation to moving the date of the elections, oh, okay. um, for me, you know, I've always said this, since the first day I came here, I said our strategy is a surge strategy. Mm -hmm. It has always been a surge strategy, and I'm in that surge now. So whether I extend it for another two weeks, three weeks, doesn't matter to me. That surge of momentum is going to keep building and building. Um, but lastly, it's very important that the data from Beavers is properly taken out before it is reset or reconfigured or whatever um, they want to term it as, so that His Excellency Peter Obi will stand the best chance in court with the data. Because we've seen how original results. We have our original polling units results. And we know that we won Lagos to over 900,000 votes. Two APCs, 160 something thousand votes. That's what our P results are telling us. And the situation room of the PDP is saying the same. So I, we need, if I have to wait for another month, for that process to come out, I don't mind. But we must give those presidential candidates the best possible foot. We must put their best foot forward in terms of evidence, in terms of data, in terms of the reality of what happened on that day. Yeah, well, we understand that your party has, you know, probably called for a nationwide peaceful protest because mm -hmm. INEC has refused to give um, Peter Obi access to, um, you know, the beavers as well. I'd yeah. love for you to touch on that. But mm -hmm. more importantly, do you feel threatened? I want you to paint a graphic picture to our audience on what exactly happened in Ekbe yesterday. So, so as our convoy was moving out, a lot of young, well, young men came out and tried to block the road, right? And obviously, we cannot go in because we had quite a lot of force with us in terms of police. Um, and yeah, the police were with us. And it was very important that we did not show any force because what would then happen is as they are trying to propagandize Igbadibo to Ichini, do they now say, I came in there and I'm trying to take over Ekbe and I'm using guns and all of that. So we had the police go in there and talk to, and try to allay everything. And DSS was also very um, helpful in that situation to neutralize the situation. But they did shoot at us, right? And they did try to intimidate us. Were you on the bus and they were shooting at you? Or well, were you I, I was, below? So, or so the exactly great thing that we had shot. was that the DSS knew they could see it coming. They went ahead. They took me down from the, 
from the top of the bus and pumped me back down. And they said, there's a threat in front. We're going to neutralize the threat. And then as we're going there, we had gunshots um, in the air. So, so do you feel safe in Lagos now? Because I know that you have also said that when your administration comes into power, you're going to end thuggery. I don't know yeah. how that would No, happen. because we're going to... I mean, look at that young man that was talking even when the APC cap. Yes. APC cap. In the what did he ask for? Yes, yeah. he asked for jobs. Mm. And I keep saying these things. A lot of these guys, they're behaving like this because they feel that their lifeline will be taken away from them. And that lifeline is a situation of just... Taking, taking, you know, not necessarily working or being productive, but the state government has backed you up so you can just take and seize, almost like the, uh, the strong arm of a mafia, of a mafia sort of structure. What we are saying is, we're going to give you the skills to work, and we're going to create work for you, right? And if you are ready to work, you have jobs. But if you want to continue doing this whole monkey to work, baboon the job situation, that's, there's no place for you in Lagos State. And I say that on my chest. I've said this for a long time. Lagos State must become productive. Eight out of ten containers that come to Lagos leave empty. With our population increasing the way it is increasing, we must have a productive population. If not, it's just going to be, we're sitting on a keg of gunpowder, oh. especially in terms of security. And mm -hmm. Lagos State needs to be secure if, we can, if we're going to grow the way we're supposed to grow attract tourists, attract investors to come in here and become a 24-hour city. Lagos State needs to be safe. Okay. You, you, well, you, Steve, yeah. sorry, before yeah. you go ahead, I'd love for that, um, you know, for you to analyze your party's call for a nationwide peaceful protest yes. if the results are not given to your presidential uh, yes, candidate. I, I, when, and, uh, when do you guys plan on organizing as long this? As, as long as PO and the leadership, our national chairman, gives the instruction, they will do that. Right? And politics is a continuum. Governance even is a continuum. And we must show our strength. And these people must understand that they cannot afford to set this country on fire. Leaders have that responsibility to ensure that there is peace and ensure that their followers' passions are not lit. So an election is a way for people to um, express themselves and push for what they want the country, how they want the country to move forward. If you take that away from them in a very illegal way that makes them feel cheated, you can potentially set the country on fire. And this was not a minority candidate. This was a candidate that had popularity all across the country, right? And not based on a tribe. I keep saying this, they're trying to color it as a tribal thing. Lagos, Labour Party won in Alimosho, who is predominantly Yoruba. The Labour Party won in Koshofe and Shomulu, which are predominantly Jebus and Yoruba. The Labour Party won in Ikeja, the capital of Lagos State, which is predominantly Yoruba. So there are a lot of people that feel slighted and cheated by the way this process has gone. And I, I, I respect His Excellency Peter Obi for calming the nerves of people, for ex giving them hope that he believes in judiciary and the right thing is going to be done. So the, 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 the INEC, the judiciary must go through the process in a transparent way and give a perception of transparency and uh, honesty mm -hmm. so that people can actually move on and focus on, you know, this whole process, this judicial process. I think the uh, proposed peaceful pro protest is actually to call Linex attention to the yes. fact that it's not honoring uh, no. the, exactly. the court order, mm -hmm. yes. you know, not to uh, protest that uh, Peter will be didn't win. No, it's, no, 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 yeah, that's what I said. That's she exactly what I said. It's for, that. But, but the question really also was, when exactly would you know? And is it true, the story that we are hearing, that B uh, INEC has gone ahead to reconfigure the beavers without giving the documents, uh, the results to uh, your, candidate, your presidential candidate? Honestly, Peter I've, I've heard a lot of things, yeah. and I will not doubt that, because honestly, the day of election, INEC acted as a arm of the APC. I'm not mincing my words. We, we saw how they acted, even from the polling unit agents that were lying that they did not have the codes to be able to log in to BVAS, right? And then when pressure was put on them, they brought out the codes, right? To world coalition officers that were tipexing results in a papa, to world coalition, to INEC uh, officials that were, and that were just bring up a reason not to announce a winner in Ojo, or not to announce a winner in Oshudi Solo um, 2, or Susu Leri 2, right? So that needs to change. And the reason why they could get away with all of that is because we believed that our electoral process had been deepened. There will be electronic transmission of results. We have seen INEX antecedents in the previous states. So we came in there with trust. But that trust is broken now. So I advise INEC to do the right thing. 
We don't want to set this country on fire. We don't want to set Lagos on fire. You have the mandate of a huge amount of people that want to see change. Let their voice prevail. Okay, you, you, you claim that uh, Labour scored more than 900, yes. you know, had more than 900,000 votes yes. in Lagos. That's, yes. that's your claim. I'm sure that will be part of uh, what yes, you guys are taking to court. To court yes. But then, from what I declared, Labour Party won in Lagos State. With the 10,000 With the 10,000. 10, uh, whether it's the 10,000 or the additional 400,000 that you believe that you won, what people are saying is that that vote... Or those votes were essentially for Mr. Peter Obi, mm. and that they may not necessarily translate to your own vote mm. on Saturday. Mm. How are you keen into making sure that those who wanted Obi, particularly the obedience, uh, will also be your supporters and voters on Saturday? Uh, well, first of all, His Excellency Peter Obi is a brand builder. What you see with Peter Obi today is trust. People trust him. People trust that when he says something, he's going to do it. That's why Peter Obi, you didn't see him with any big billboards across Lagos State. I mean, most of the campaign jingles on radio were done by other people for him. I don't think he had any big campaign videos on TV. I don't correct me if I'm wrong. You're right. But then you see other parties that spend billions on campaign billboards and all of that. They lost abysmally, right? So it's about brand building, and he has built a brand. And that brand that he has built is transferable. When he says, I'm supporting this person, mm -hmm. the people that believe in that brand will also believe in the brand that he's supporting. And he has said that. He's endorsed me several, on several platforms, on several um, instances, and he's coming to Lagos to campaign mm -hmm. with okay. us. Mm -hmm. So um, I have no doubt that. And also, I've risen to, I believe that the search strategy has worked very well because there's a time now that we need to ginger and we need to... Um, get the morale of the obedience up, and I'm doing that all mm -hmm. across Lagos State. So I have no doubt that they're going to come out, and we're going to come out even more, because now we understand what we're dealing with with INEC, because there's so many people that were disenfranchised from voting on that day. Yeah. So many people that were moved to polling units and the agents never came, right? So many people that were pushed away and the, the, in front of a Lagos palace, in front of a Nero's palace, right? That is not going to happen again. Understand, it's not going to happen again. So even the numbers you're going to see in this election are going to be more because we're coming there structured, ready to resist any form of intimidation or harassment. Do you yeah. think that the Igbo vote in Lagos will be the tiebreaker? Hmm. You see, Ali Mosho, we won with over 100,000 plus votes, right? They took about 50,000 votes out of our votes there. That's a majority of Yoruba place. So it's about... Lagos State is a microcosm of Nigeria. And it's about all of them coming out because we need a huge margin. We need a landslide victory. Right? So it's not, you see, this coloration, I, no, because when you talk about Amor Dauphin, Oshodi Solo, Ajemi Feludun, that's pretty much it. They now start talking about Ali Mosho, Koshofe, Shomolu, Ikeja. These are predominantly Yoruba places. These are places that the PDP never won in almost two decades. Huge. So you have a lot of you, but, and that's why it's so painful to see how people that are not even from Lagos are trying to question my pedigree in Lagos that goes back over 400 years, trying to make this a, um, you have voting for an Igbo governor, right? Mm -hmm. would, that, would that be because you are, you are half Igbo? Is it even correct to say that you are half Igbo? Your mom is Igbo, yeah, your wife is Igbo. My wife is Igbo. Okay. Timbo's uh, wife is from your Chine, your, your, Yeah. Your Chinedu, My right? grandmother gave me the name Chinedu, okay. which means God guides me. Right? My other grandmother on my paternal side gave me Patrick. Right? And my grandfather gave me Badibo. Right? So I don't understand. You see, anyway, a governor that dodged debates five times has clearly decided that this conversation is not going to be issue based. So they're going to muddy the waters and bring in whatever it is. But I tell people, see this, this Yoruba that people want to carry on, it should be not just lip service. When Herdsmen were coming and killing people in the Southwest. Oh. What was Somolu and Tinubu saying? When Ruti Makere Dolu, a fellow governor, stood up for his people. When people like Sonny Go stood up for his people. When people like um, Pade Banjo stood up for his people. What were they saying? When um, Tinubu went to go and pay condolence visit to Fasuronti and he asked, where are the cows? Oh. Was that very Yoruba? Was that in the interest of Yoruba? 
And then you now find that it's only when it's time to play politics that they start to remind you, but what have they done for the Yoruba people? Markets burn down in Lagos State, Tinubu is quiet. Markets burn in Kano, Tinubu goes there and gives them money. Right? So all our young men that are on the streets, that are on drugs, have they gone to go and meet the oh, yeah, Yoruba and my sons? Come, yeah. let's get you off the street, let's rehabilitate you. Do you speak Igbo? Just just I was going to ask that. (laughs) That was what I exactly (laughs) was going to ask. But but before you even... I mean, there has been that robust response from even the Yoruba Social Cultural Group at Fair Fair, saying that you are a true Lagosian and like you have said, your family dates back, you know, five generations. But do you speak Yoruba? What what do you say about the people that say you don't speak fluent Yoruba? I, I speak Yoruba. But my intonation, okay. my intonation is something that makes people laugh at me. Okay. okay. But Yoruba, <laughs> dada. But I understand Yoruba very well. Uh-huh. Like I me, understand I understand Yoruba, Yoruba, Yoruba as well. Right? I understand Yoruba <laughs> Just well. But hey, boy, it, Yoruba, Yoruba, dada. Oh, boy, Yoruba. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ibo, unko? Not really. Okay. Right? Not really. But also, it didn't help that I schooled abroad for so long. Yeah, I mean. As well. Yeah. yeah. Right? But I'm learning, you know. And it points to come and bring you a fluent speech in Yoruba. Maybe it's with my, on my inauguration day. Where are you learning your Yoruba I have my at this teacher. point? Oh, you have a teacher yeah, right now? Teacher. You, you think it's necessary it's right now to important. govern no, Lagos no, no, State? No, not that. It's, not that. See, there's so much richness mm-hmm. in the Yoruba language. In the ways, in the, in the proverbs. There's yeah. so much knowledge in it. Even when you start thinking about Ifa, not just as a spiritual thing, but as a codifying of knowledge, right? And how that's the basis on which they now created analog and even computers. It is so, even, no matter how you want to study it, whether it's history, whether it's language, whether it is understanding visual communication, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. So for that, I'm learning it. Okay. But, and language goes into people's hearts, right? English can, if you're very good, go into people's hearts, but language always goes into people's hearts. So it's important to learn. So your mother is Igbo. Yeah, my mother your is Igbo. Your wife is Igbo. My wife is And Igbo. you don't speak Igbo. I Neither do you Igbo. speak Yoruba. You are... <laughs> I understand. I understand both. Okay. I understand both. You know, I mean, your wife came out with this amazing campaign video. I mean, she's been in the center of this whole Ferrari yeah. about your, you know, yeah, background and yeah. all of that. Now, tell me, what, how, did, how was that video received from your end? And what do you say about everyone who... Um, have, uh, you know, kind of said some disparaging words mm. regarding that particular well, video. I, you see, let me tell you something about my wife. My wife was on a full Bill Gates grant studying malaria, African malaria parasites in Thailand when I met her. And her professor then changed the topic to Asian malaria parasites. And she said she cannot do this because it does not benefit her people. She then, she left, came back to England, got a master's in um, public health from Oxford, then started her PhD all over again because she must do the African malaria parasite. That is the extent of her passion for her people. Whatever knowledge she's getting, it must be applicable to her people. Right, so when I saw her, because I was not, I did not, to be honest, I was not aware of that video. I was, I was campaigning and everything. She came, she did it, and then eventually, like three, four days later, People start calling me like, oh, wow. So I then watched it. I'm like, wow, this is very first lady. You know, I, I like it. I, 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 I was very impressed. I think it's really good. And it goes, it's substance. It's not just talk. It's, it's, I know the value that she'll bring um, to advisory or governance. And I know the kind of funds she can also pull in across the world. I mean, she's currently backed by, her research is going to be backed by Bill Gates. So I can only imagine if... She had more access to government to be able to do more research and getting more funds for the state. So she's definitely a value add and she's very mm-hmm. passionate about her people. Yeah. Okay. Your, At your, the same time that yeah. video came out, yes. your sister's video came out yes. as well. Yeah. She works with the Lagos state government yes. as well. And you know, people are talking about or saying that's the beauty yeah. of democracy. Yes. You're supporting your sister, is your sister supporting you? Yeah. Well, see, I'm very proud. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. I talk about it all the time. Domestic violence response team. I, I was, we were there from the beginning. We were there when she'll come back, hear all these complaints and be crying and breaking down because of all the pain that people were dealing with. And I've seen her grow. So I'm very proud of her. Whatever this government wants to do, to try and use that, put scripts that she must say this or say that, it's okay. She's your real sister. She's my sister. You know, <laughs> she's my sister. And there's, there's, more, there's more that bonds us than you know, than APC playing dirty okay. politics. Uh, just a quick one before we uh, come to issues of governance. Yes. 
Um, what's your understanding of the changing concept of who a Lagosian is? Mm. When, when, I mean, you'll be dealing with more than 20 million people. Yeah, like Oji said, there will be a population. So there's a first generation, second generation, third, maybe fourth. Uh, things are changing. The description of you know, who has a right to do what is, is, is nebulous. Who is the Lagosian to you? That's a very tough one and a very sensitive one at that. Um, you see, originally the inhabitants of Lagos were the Awaris and the Igons. Now, you see a lot of people with English names that are here today were people that were captured on these shores. They are worried, mm -hmm. because that's the first contact with, with the coastline, yeah. right? So a lot of them came back. A lot of them never even got to the shores where they were taking them to. Like the survival side of my family, the British boarded that vessel and turned it to Freetown, which is why it's called Freetown. And that's where they got their first education. And then these people came back and then fought for freedom from the colonial masters. I'm talking about Herbert Macaulay. I'm talking about Eric Moore, all those kind of, those families. So there are people that have really invested and built Lagos. So maybe we'll call them foundational Lagosians or aboriginal Lagosians. Then there are Lagosians that might not be from here, but they've invested and really everything that they own in life is here. They've added so much value. They're paying taxes, right? Am I going to say they're not Lagosian? And they have people that are just coming in, you know, maybe last 10 years or anything, but they're creating value, right? So for me, I, I think we are ultimately going to get to a point where we see Lagos as a microcosm of Nigeria. One that we are all united, but let us also respect indigenship rights as well. Mm -hmm. They should also be given a pride of place because the they don't have, of the land. Yes, they don't they don't have any other place to call home. Yeah. A Kadoso cannot go to Oyo and say he wants to work for governor. A Kadoso cannot go to Ekiti and say he wants to become governor. They will tell you, where is your father's house? You see, so but a someone who can come from Ogwa and be governor of Lagos, right? Tinobu can come from Osha and be governor of Lagos. Uh, Eric Beshola can come in, Governor Faliki, all these guys, right? Okay, so the Lagosians that are here, where can they go? This is the only place they have called home. So let us be sensitive about that as well. But what I know is that Lagos State should be the commercial capital of Africa. Mm -hmm. And to do that, everybody must feel that they are stakeholders. Everybody must feel that this government enables commerce. And everybody must feel at home then we can start to get to that excellent level that we are supposed to be. Well, what do you therefore say to those who, who uh, say to you that, yes, he's a Lagosian, yes, he's well-read, Ivy League schools, but then he's got no corporate experience mm. to lead a state like I Lagos? Ask, I asked them, what corporate experience did um, Paolo have? Think about it. He was a lawyer, he was a, a politician, he was, he was a, a lawyer, publisher. He was a lawyer. He was a publisher. He wrote his own books. Yeah. And then you can call him an activist. In a way, yes. Abba Macaulay. Same. Pajakonde. Well, uh, you know that people have taken you up on the Jakonde part. Tell me, tell me. Uh, that when you say that, what experience did he have? And they will tell you that he was a, a newspaper editor. He was a journalist. No, we are talking was... about experience in the public sector, because that's what they're talking about. They either say, you have not worked in government, or they say you have not worked in commercial service. They're also government. asking about your corporate, private sector corporate experience. <sighs> I've worked with the American government, I've worked with Chinese government. When do you say that, what, massive, is, what, is, what does massive that mean? Massive urban planning. So for instance, in New Orleans, after Hurricane Katrina, I consulted with New Orleans government, right, to redesign the, um, the, What's this space called? I'm sorry, I'm forgetting. It'll come to me. So you have New Orleans, you have the low saddle part that is very, that's cheap, right? And then you have the French Quarter. That's it, the French Quarter. That's the expensive part of the real estate there. But we want to create a dense design there because we had to move all these people from staying in flood prone areas, right? So this was a project that we did for over a year, right? To design and consult for that. Same thing with the Chinese government in Beijing, the Beijing Authority. Right. We came in there as consultants to work with them on that. When I moved back to Nigeria, I worked with um, Temple Housing, which does alternative housing using containers and using alternative construction methods. I worked with CISA, right? We did, we does fantastic designs. So it's not like you've never worked or earned a living from what you studied, ar architecture. Uh, you see, some people, they're just desperate. All right, but you um, have also been in this um, mix of this uh, certificate forgery 
allegation as well. People say that you did not really go to I, I, MIT. Premium Times published, and published an article, Premium I think, yesterday. Has, yes, and has the the that. But you see what yes, I've learned I from this have, process. That's what I to do. You, know, so there was, you know, when I went to the market that got burnt, that was yeah. set on fire, I started to see that some people were saying that I set the place on fire, then went there as a solution. And now people are thinking I forced a ticket. So you see that people's minds program based on what they do or what is acceptable to them. Mm. You see, the idea of forging a certificate and coming and talking about it is so foreign to me that, I mean, why, why would I even think to do that? Well, you see, people that do that expect that other people are doing that, right? And that's why they come up with these, all these kind of stories. But the fact of the matter, whatever dirt they want to throw on me, is only, I'm only going to just take it and climb higher. Because I did not come here to lie. Mm. I've kept all my receipts. And I have them in abundance. Okay, cool. Yeah. So do you really think you can run Lagos better than Songolu? Of course, because <laughs> I'm not encumbered and shackled by one man that is a godfather of Lagos and is demanding so much out of the Commonwealth of Lagos. That is one. So you can tell that I'm going to be delivering four times what the APC is currently delivering. That's already a baseline. That's a baseline. Secondly, we are going to open up our accounts. The reason why they cannot open up their accounts is because of all the things that they are taking from it. Now, I don't intend to take from it. So I'm going to open their accounts and break it down line by line and even go one step further. Illustrate it with infographics. And you will not have to apply for FOI. It will be there. I'll be updating it. And I, I keep saying this thing on live TV. So if after the third month you've not seen it, you know that this guy is not what he says he is. So after the third month, that's what you're saying? First no? month. I'm saying first month. First month. And first if month. after the third month you're not... All of you should well, come for me. We should come for you. So, okay, great. But and, that's and, the same thing that, um, similar to what Funsho Doherty and Jando are promising, a, a CEO that will not have a second level of approval. Why, therefore, should it be you? Why not Funsha Duarte, who I'm sure you have like a relationship, you know, you're no, I, your I respect, grandfathers. I respect, yeah. respect Funsha Duarte. I think he's an excellent man. Um, and he has his own race. I'm running my race, yeah. right? And my race is also an edge that I have out of all the other candidates. Is that I'm, the only, I'm the only one that's actually been a candidate, right? I've contested for Senate, Lagos West, the largest sure. central district in Nigeria by population. Right. I've visited a lot of these wards, so I know the pain points. Right? That's why when I talk, I talk from a place of empathy, because I've seen this pain. Right? So if there's an edge, I'll say, okay, that might be my own edge. Um, Fun Shodrati has his edge. Um, yeah. So, um, Does Jando have any edge? I don't, I don't, I don't regard that. All right, what about the reports of collapsing your party? And also, I'd like to find out, um, you did say that Peter Obi will be campaigning. Yes. But he, there was a report saying that he was going to cancel his campaigns because he wants to pursue his No, 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 mandate. no, 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 no. Peter report, Obi came, called me the very next day. In fact, we're supposed to campaign on Saturday. But it was too short notice. And then we're supposed to campaign on Thursday, but he had to have a court hearing. So he's very supportive, he's very um, encouraging, and he's going to be on ground. I have no doubt about it. Mm. And he's been supportive. He supported several governorship candidates. Of course, I mean, he's been campaigning. He's been on the field in several states, and he's coming to Lagos. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, we saw pictures that he posted uh, yeah. yesterday in a do state, yes. but mm. we didn't see the candidate with him in that picture. So oh, there's okay. been that you know, conversation whether or not he is going to continue to campaign. So it's refreshing to yeah. hear that he will campaign for you. He will, he will, he will, he will. He, will. You, he has a big heart. He has a big nice. heart. So you are saying that you are capable of running Lagos? Certainly. You, I mean, I'll be the greatest every, every, governor Lagos has You will has be had. the great, that. Right, because, so, because the bar I've set is a large relative Jack mm -hmm. right? And, and he did so much that I can learn from. Yeah. So I'm not starting from ground zero. Mm -hmm. So I should be able to build and Top that. Okay, first 100 days. And you've also talked about delinking Alpha better yes. as well. I'd yes. love to hear your what you plan to do your first 100 days. Three agendas, just keep laid well, down. Well, we're going to depoliticize waste management so that Lagos State can actually genuinely be clean and open it as a platform transparent system so that anybody that has trucks or the capability to evacuate waste can get involved, right? We're going to stop the payments to Alpha better. That, that, that's How do you a, plan on doing that? I mean, I'm people the CEO are saying of the, the state. Okay. Whatever they want to say, they can say. But I do not see value in this value you are giving me. LIRS is the one that does most of this work anyway. So why should I be paying 10% of the revenue of the state to you when there are children that are in schools that don't have tables? 
that don't have chairs, um, we, are, we are not paying our doctors on time. Lagos State, you look at all the debts that we are in, you don't see the level of development in the state as well. So it's not, it's not acceptable. So waste management, delinking yes. alpha better. And then and transportation systems. We're going to also um, open up the BRT lanes because these are short term goals. Open up BRT lanes to other companies that can carry over 40 people, right? And ensure that that starts moving forward. And then we are going to publish all the accounts of Lagos State. First 100 days publish all the accounts of Lagos State okay. and then start creating infographics so that we can build trust again with the people. Yeah. Okay, right. just, just two seconds. Uh, you've run a good race. If on Saturday or whatever the results are out, you do not win, will you concede and, and congratulate the winner? If INEC is a fair umpire and not an arm of the APC and they electronically transmit results, as you know, we've gotten a judgment that yes. says yes. INEC must do that. Must do, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And if there is no intimidation or harassment that stops people from voting, and that happens, and we see clearly that that's not the case, which I know it will not be, but let's, in this hypothetical world, mm -hmm. I don't want Lagos State to go up in flames. So whatever I have to do to keep the peace, because I love Lagos, you know, it's like that, it's like that, um, that situation with King Solomon where they wanted to cut the child, or, you know, I always they choose have. to yeah. keep the child. Solomonic wisdom. Well, thank you. Right. Well, thank, thank you, you thank so, you so much, much for having me. Unfortunately, I would have loved to find out you are you collapsing your party. No, if, collapsing. No, if, if you no were to, other, I mean, parties other parties are collapsing are going to for us. Yes. For you uh, as well. We have you one. We have one goal have to one. take out the APC. I know right. of us are coming together to do that. That's good. Thank to you hear. very thank much. Thank you so much thank for you. having me. Badibero's Viva. We wish you good luck. Thank you.